Hi, it's time for uh, more theory and for third grade. Today we're going to do the plagal cadence. The plagal cadence. So what is the plagal cadence? That's the cadence where you're going from the subdominant triad, chord four, to chord one. So previously we have done the perfect cadence where you're going from the dominant chord to chord one, which definitely makes the music sound nice and finished because in the perfect cadence you have the leading note rising to the tonic. In the plagal cadence, it also sounds finished because it returns to chord one, uh, but it's different in nature, different in tone, different in sound, different in emotion. It's a little more solemn, and so the plagal cadence was traditionally used uh, in hymnology uh, for all you uh, hymn lovers out there. Uh, you will recognize the Amen cadence at the end of a hymn. Uh, you get to the end of the hymn and then you sing this Amen cadence. So, four to one. And so let's examine what is involved and how we can form a plagal cadence in four-part harmony. The first thing to, I think, identify is there is a note in common. And that will be important, uh, particularly in the sense that it's actually the, to um, the tonic note of the scale that's, that's the note in common. So if you're doing oral recognition of cadences, that's an important thing to understand because uh, if you're trying to tell the difference between a perfect cadence and a plagal cadence, then you need to be able to hear the leading note of the scale rising to the tonic in a perfect cadence. And you need to be able to then hear that in a plagal cadence you have the tonic note running through both chords. That's a little tip for trying to recognise the sound of these cadences. Anyway, today we're going to learn how to voice this in four-part harmony. So why don't we just get involved in that and get that sorted. So, first step, the bass voice is going to go from the fourth note of the scale the root note of chord four, which is the F, will go into the bass voice. And that will step down, of course, to the root note of chord one, which is the C. So fourth note of the scale, moving to the first note of the scale, the root notes of the chords. All right, so that's the bass voice. Now, the next voice to uh, take advantage of is um, giving the note in common to the voice. I'm going to give it to the soprano, um, which will help create a smooth flow. So that is, of course, the tonic note of the scale. So it's the fifth of chord four going to the root note of chord one. But that really helps because it gives us that oblique feel in the voice leading. So once we've got a soprano and, an L and, and the bass voice, then we want to look at um, the other two voices and basically the simple thing to know is that the other voices have to step down. All right, so we need to use the third of chord four, so that's the A. So if we give the A to one of the voices, I'm gonna give it to the alto, pop that in. And then the easy thing is, is you know that that's gonna be able to step down to a note in the next chord. So it moves down by step. Both the other two voices will move down by step. And of course, there, the A, the third note of chord four, will step down to the G, which is the fifth of chord one. Or in scale degrees, the sixth note of the scale to the fifth note of the scale. Uh, now the other voice we have is the tenor. And we need to double the root note to do this one. So Get that. Now, I can't do that. Now, unison is not a problem. Uh, there's no problem with the unison. But it is a problem here because it's gonna, the tenor is going to have to step down. I, mean, I could do this. Put um, the bass all the way down to there. And have the tenor there. But I have another problem here, and that is that there's more than an octave gap between the tenor and the alto. 
So that's no good at all. So I'm actually going to move that up an octave. I'm still in the tenor range here, being on that F. So that's uh, that's fine. Uh, maybe I can put that up again. All right, and then we know that doubling the root note of chord four in the tenor, that just needs to step down. And that's going to step down to the third of chord one. And there it is. Eight, eight, six, five, four, three, four, one. Takes no time at all. Here, let's try one in a minor key, shall we? Uh, F sharp minor. Why not? See how quickly I can do this. All right. F sharp minor. Four to one. There we go. Now, the uh, tonic note needs to be doubled. Now, we need to be careful here. Right, because um, what's going to happen, if I did that up an octave, I'm going to get into trouble because I'm going to end up with more than an octave gap between the voices. So try not to let the soprano get too high. This is where people get into trouble. All right, so uh, next is the third of chord four. Needs to step down. So you know that the inner voice is just step down. It's really really easy in that sense. And uh, then I need here to double the root note. And that will step down. So you can see how, even though I was fairly low for the soprano in the, in the treble clef, there was still room. And now I have all the upper three voices in good close position. And that's the way you need to need to do it. Um, let me just do one in D major just to bring home that point because um, people really get that wrong. So I'm going to do another one in D major uh, just so you can see again what I'm doing here and how we need to be really, really careful. So hang on, first of all, let's do... Okay, so four to one. Um, now, watch this. If I if I do eight to eight, you can mix the three upper voices around, by the way. They don't have to be in, in that order specifically. But see, if I put um, the eight to eight down there, it's really going to mess me up because I've no room for the other voices um, unless I put the tenor down there. I might be able to get away with it. Let's see if we can do it. Um, six to five. Okay, and then we need four to three. Okay, I did manage to pull it off. Um, so there it is. It, it did work. Um, now I could, I could swap these around. I could put the soprano on the six to five, and I could bring the alto with the eight to eight. So there you go. That's another version. Works perfectly. Um, and I don't have the notes too spread out because you can't have more than an octave gap between the three upper voices. So ta-da. There's your plagal cadence. They are all the issues involved. Make sure you're careful to keep the voices close together and you can't go wrong. Enjoy.